Okay. Uh, good evening and uh, welcome to the Carlisle Board of Selectmen meeting for Tuesday, January 8th, 2019. Uh, we are running a little bit late, uh, 25 minutes late, and uh, I do apologize for that. At um, 6.30, we are going to convene uh, in open session as we are right now, but we are immediately going to go into executive session. Uh, when we come out of executive session, we will be uh, accepting community input. Uh, we will be uh, discussing the Woodward Conservation Restriction. Um, we will uh, uh, hear a report from the Housing Authority Subcommittee um, and uh, consider appointments to the Housing Authority. Uh, we will be doing recommendations for hiring a facilities manager, um, hearing from the Agricultural Commission on a, a right to farm bylaw. Um, uh, we will be doing appointments, cemetery deeds, uh, receive the town administrator's reports, do board of liaison reports, and then minutes. And then at the end, we will be entering again into executive uh, session and uh, will uh, not be returning to um, open session or never to return. Uh, so with that, um, <laughs> is there a motion to enter into executive session? Uh, no, uh, before you do that, I would like to open um, the housing trust meeting at the same time. Um, housing trust <coughs> meeting of January 8th, 2019. Um, and we will also be going into executive session immediately. Okay. And then we will be coming back out to and to um, Open session. To open session, and then we'll adjourn. The housing trust will adjourn. Okay. Okay. okay so I move the board of selectmen enter. Yeah, excuse me. I, I, I think the motion misstates the the, the exemption. Uh, uh, it's not paragraph three, uh, litigation. It's, uh, it's purpose one. Pur purpose one, mm -hmm. to hear complaints against a public officer or employee. It's on the agenda correctly, but the the motion is we should refer to. Purpose one. Purpose one. Of the uh, exemptions to the Okay, I'll see law. if I can figure this out okay. then. Uh, move that the Board of Selectmen enter into a joint executive session with the Carlisle Affordable Trust Housing Trust. So not a, not pursuant to MGL um, Chapter 30A? No, it is. Oh, okay. Paragraph. So it's, all this is still oh, that good? Might be, that one might be, I'm looking at a wrong motion. You might have the correct one there. Paragraph 30A. That's the one that Devery had drafted. Section 21. 21A1. Okay, so that's, that that's is correct. The, okay, you have the correct one, all right. sorry. Yeah. To discuss an open meeting law complaint filed against the members of the Board of Selectmen and the Carlisle Affordable Housing Trust on December 20th, 2018, to invite Tim Goddard, Ivria, I hope I spelled that, I pronounce that right. Glass, Freed, and nobody. Nobody else. Nobody else. Uh, nobody else. Uh, <laughs> to attend the joint executive session and to reconvene an open session for the purpose of continuing on with the items as listed in the Board of Selectmen's agenda. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none. Seeing none. Uh, Brown, aye. Reed, aye. Reed, aye. Oscar Lillard. Lewis, aye. For the selectmen, they both, both boards have to do that. Yeah, and um, also, we're going. If you can just amend that motion, I didn't realize Carrie was going to be coming in remotely. You have to say in the motion that someone is coming in remotely. So okay, so that that and yeah, right blank just say and uh, selectman Carrie Kissinger remotely. Okay, I accept uh, the you, amendment. <laughs> well, do you accept the amendment? Yep, accept okay. the amendment. All right, uh, do we have to vote again? Brown eye. <laughs> Read I. Oscar Lillard. Lewis I. Okay. Okay. I need another motion. Hey, I move that the Carlisle uh, Affordable Housing Trust enter into a joint executive session with the Board of Selectmen pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 30A, uh, Section 21A1, to discuss an open meeting law complaint filed against the members of the Carlisle Affordable Housing Trust and the Board of Selectmen on December 20th, 2018, and to invite Tim Goddard and Ivria Glass Ivria. Freed. Um, and noting that Carrie Kissinger uh, will be uh, attending remotely. Uh, to attend the joint executive session and to reconvene an open session for the purpose of adjoining the meeting. Second. Adjoining. Um, there's a uh, motion and a second. Any further discussion? Roll call vote. Lewis, aye. Oscar Lillow, aye. Brown, aye. Kissinger, aye. Reed, aye. 
Okay, that okay. passes unanimously. We are in executive Thank session. You. So I'm And going. I am so sorry.
Okay. Uh, thank you all. I'm very sorry that we are running so late, um, but we are now uh, uh, returning to open session for the Board of uh, Selectmen um, that we had previously opened at about 10 minutes of 7. Um, so at this point, I've already read through the agenda. I won't do that again. At this point, uh, we will be taking uh, any community input. Do you have to close the trust read? Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, we have to. We have one more piece of business. Yes. Um, I need a motion to close move, the trust. Meeting. I move that the uh, to close uh, uh, to adjourn sure. the Carlisle Affordable uh, Trust meeting. Second. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? What? I, I don't think we need to do. Uh, a we do because he's. Oh, we've we got a remote. Brown eye. Reed Os eye. Oscar Willow eye. Lewis eye. Missing your eye. Okay. okay. We got gotcha. you. All right, thank you very much. Thank you for. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, public input. Pay, pay attention a little bit. Hi, Desiree Ball, Prospect Street. Um, on November 13th, you had a meeting here, um, and it was that infamous meeting where there was about an hour and a half's discussion of the deer hunt in the public comment section at the beginning. And at the end of that um, discussion, Carrie Kissinger um, made a very important comment, I thought, which I've transcribed and I'd like to read just a couple sentences from it, just to kind of jog your memory. Um, he said, I'd like to say just one thing, and it's about process. The selectmen's meeting is a meeting for the selectmen to do the business of the town, as opposed to a public hearing which is a very different kind of a meeting. This has not been a public hearing, it's been a selectman's meeting. We relish community input, which we have at every meeting, but this amount of time that we've dedicated to this is somewhat extraordinary. I just want you to know that. It's not normal for us to be having our little meeting and inviting this much time on a topic where we've had plenty of information coming in from public comment. Now at your next meeting, which was on the 27th of November, um, I was the first person to come up and, and comment, and I read a letter from Judy Asserkoff, where she asked if there was going to be a public meeting on the deer hunt. And this is what you responded. Um, <coughs> At the end of the last meeting, the next step was for the deer committee to have an open public meeting where they would invite people in to gather feedback and make a recommendation based upon that feedback to the Board of Selectmen as to whether or not putting deer hunting on the town meeting agenda was appropriate. And so it seems to me we have that forum and there is yet another forum after that which would be town meeting. And so I think we have everything in place to be able to gather the appropriate feedback. We will make sure that it's well advertised when this meeting is happening and then we can come back to the Board of Selectmen with their recommendation, and then they, meaning the Deer Committee, can come back to the Board of Selectmen with their recommendation as we charge to them. Does anybody disagree with that? And that's when Kate Reed said, I'd like to point out that when we embarked upon this whole thing, the Deer Committee and the Board of Selectmen held a joint open forum. In fact, I believe there were two that were held. So people had already had ample opportunity b before we even embarked on the whole thing to weigh in, and I think that's an appropriate way to finish. Maybe we'd want to do it again as we did it before so that we actually, and then you um, kind of interrupted and said, what I think makes sense is they do it first, and of course, when they present, it will be an open Board of Selectmen's meeting. Now, I, um, would like to know what is actually going to happen uh, about this open meeting that's not going to be a Board of Selectmen meeting, but um, an open meeting for public comment on the deer hunt. That's my comment. Okay. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I stuck my foot in again, sorry. So I think, uh, Carrie, has there been a uh, meeting to discuss it? Yes, there was a meeting. Um, uh, last week, I believe, or 
Monday. I'm not sure which. I was not able to attend, <clears throat> but um, the um, folks were invited. It was, the meeting was posted. Folks were invited to attend and provide input. Um, just as a, uh, I, I believe, as a result of uh, that meeting, also they held a vote. The Deer Committee held a vote to um, uh, whether or not to recommend taking this question to town meeting in uh, April. And uh, it, I, it's my understanding that they voted affirmatively to do that and that they would be recommending that to the Board of Selectmen for their consideration. And do we have it on our agenda to hear that yet? Oh, here it is. You did uh, have them. Yeah, scheduled for the 22nd, please. That request. Uh, one article. Okay. Yeah, this is new. This wasn't This wasn't an email, right? This no. is just no. news. No. Okay. <coughs> it was in the back of the sign. No, oh, it wasn't. It wasn't? It? Okay. From no. This was in the packet? Yeah, I've read it. I've read the packet. I didn't say this, but okay. Okay. Um, well, we're in public meeting right now. I'm going to propose that we chat about this when we talk about our schedule. Mm -hmm. Because I think it can apply to a schedule. Mm -hmm. the, the, the DARE committee met on the 2nd, Wednesday the 2nd. Okay. Um, okay, is there any other public input? Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Jean Tinesco from Maple Street in Carlisle. Um, the Deer Committee, I was at the Deer Committee on, on January 2nd, and at the meeting, uh, they completed their final report and voted on it and, and approved it and said that they were going to send it out to the Board of Selectmen uh, on Friday, 1 4. This past Friday, and I'm asking that an electronic copy of that report be made available to the public as soon as you can, so that we can review it. Um, uh, my my I, my reference to the um, uh, the uh, the recommendation by the for the board of selectmen. Uh, well, excuse me. What Carrie had said is not what I had heard at the uh, your committee uh, um, uh, meeting. Uh, the information was given over to five, five people that were going to vote on whether or not that the deer hunt should be turned over to a vote by the town citizens. Uh, three people, Todd Thorson of the Board of Health, Steve Smith of CONSCOM, and Steve Tobin of the Trails Committee voted emphatically for the town vote. Uh, deer agent Dan Bohanek and citizen at large John Keating voted to abstain because they felt it was out of their charter to vote on such a question. I wanted to <coughs> say I concur with those three who are in favor of the town citizens having a vote on whether to have a deer hunt because it is what we do to have a democracy in Carlisle. Uh, the last thing I want to mention is that the, uh, the, the whole meeting was basically, we were, uh, the public was observers, we really didn't participate. We were, we were told that they, they couldn't give us a copy of the report then, or even when it was finished, that it would all have to come through you. So we did make some comments there on what we had heard. But the issue of hunters being allowed to place cameras in the woods came up. And if we were to assume one camera per hunter, that is 18 cameras. But of course, some hunters may have chosen more. The cameras were mounted months before the hunt took place. Privacy for the hikers was taken away without their knowledge. In retrospect, I would have recommended for the signs that the deer hunting signs contain a notice that active filming with hidden cameras was occurring in the woods. And this would have been especially interesting to the Romeo and Juliets of Carlisle. At the end of the discussion on camera usage, it was felt by the deer committee that the town did not have an official position on whether these mounted cameras should be allowed. And hopefully, if the final report of the Deer Committee doesn't recommend this, I ask the town to take this into consideration. Okay. Thank you. Any other public input? Okay, seeing none, um, we will uh, go ahead and talk about the Woodward Conservation Restriction. Are there people here to 
to okay. Just like to pass out um, a copy of some plans so that you understand mm -hmm. the property that's being discussed tonight. The town acquired um, two of the Woodward lots, lot one and lot two on the plan that's being circulated at 767 Bedford Road, partially with CPC funds last year. As a condition of using CPC funds, a conservation restriction must be placed on the property. The Carlisle Conservation Foundation has agreed to hold the conservation restriction. In discussing the terms of the CR, it was raised that the town may want to, one day in the future, run a water pipe across the northern portion of the property to Maple Street, mostly along Lot 1. And for way of background, in 1997, the town purchased the Old Rook land that's just north and east of the Woodward parcel. In 1991, the town sold this land to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife, but retained water rights in the land. So one day, if the town wants to, it could develop those rights. And in developing those rights, they may want to run a pipe to access the water through this land to Maple Street. Additionally, if the Woodward land, which I believe part of Lot 3, is eventually developed, a water pipe may, you might want to run a water pipe from that portion of Lot 3 to Maple Street as well. So in negotiating the terms of the conservation restriction, the Carlisle Conservation Foundation had no issue with the town using the property in this way. So we included a, a condition in the conservation restriction that would allow for the burying of a pipe um, in this land. The Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs, who has to approve all of the conservation restrictions in the state, however, had some issues with the potential permission. Specifically, they flagged the provision because it potentially violated Article 97 of the Constitution, the state Constitution. And Article 97 preserves um, parkland or land that's put to public use for conservation purposes. And if a property owner wants to dispose of that land or change the use of that land, and in order to do so, they need approval of the legislature. That's what we call Article 97 approval. Um, in addition to getting approval of the legislature, you would need to devote uh, a parcel of equal or greater size to conservation purposes. So EEA is taking the position that if the town wants to bury a pipe in this land, which is Article 97 land, that that's a change in use and it would it would require approval of the legislature to do that. So in town council's office, we question this position. We think that it's a very strict reading. The land is still going to be used as conservation purposes. The pipe's gonna be buried, trees, minimal cutting. This is agricultural land, mostly, so no cutting in, in most of the, the portion of the property anyways. But EEA wasn't budging. And so there's two options for the town. The first option is to continue to include a provision in the conservation restriction that would allow for the pipe to be buried in this property. However, you would have to agree that if and when the town wanted to do that, to bury the pipe, they would have to go through the Article 97 process. So you would basically, basically be agreeing today that in the future you would go through that approval process. Option two is to have the conservation restriction remains silent on this issue. That would mean that in order to actually bury the pipe, you would need to amend the conservation restriction. The only, the benefit of doing it that way is that if in the future, EEA changes its position and believes that you can bury a pipe on conservation land without changing its use, and that you don't need to go through the Article 97 process, the town won't be, wouldn't have committed itself already. So one requires a ch a amending the conservation restriction and maybe also going through the Article 97 process. The other, you wouldn't have to amend the conservation restriction in the future, but you're committing the town to going through the Article 97 process. So those are the two options that are presented tonight. They both have 
potential pitfalls, but both can result in the solution that the town wants if you do want to ever develop the property in this way. Anybody have any questions? No, I think the options are clear. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I would say, though, um, that when, when next we do any conservation restrictions, we dig our trenches first. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or we try to provide, uh, you know, we, some other mechanism, yes. mm -hmm. like an easement yeah. or whatever. Yes. I mean, if we had just identified it, it wouldn't have been a problem. Yeah, it's, it's, right. just, so I'm, yeah. I'm it's just a mess. There's lots of things going on. Yeah, yeah. It's, so it's, it's frustrating. Just, it's not now, let, well, so I guess the question is, is there any way to amend the the conservation restriction, you know, the, the boundaries of it to give us a cord or some sort of a, an easement or something like that so that we don't have to go through all this? Unfortunately, the answer to that question is no, because the property itself was already acquired pursuant to a town meeting vote that uh, required that the whole land be, yeah, be used for yeah, conservation purposes. All right. Yeah. So is, is there another route from the federal land to Maple Street that doesn't involve any of these restricted uh, properties? Over private property. Right, so we could take an easement over private property would be one option, and, and actually, is it there's that abutting property of the Dutro, uh, right, uh, Carol, Carol's land. Maybe we could approach her later, mm -hmm. see if she. And this is all that. my understanding. <clears throat> my understanding is that this is all pretty theoretical at yeah. this point. Right. It is, but. Um, Carlisle has water issues, and, mm -hmm. that, and we need to be very vigilant about protecting them. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'm upset that we kind of let that. So, so there are two options. You know, one is we let it remain silent. We kind of have this agreement, or is there? You know, we could go back and say, well, this was here. Talk to the conservation restriction holder. Say, are you still willing to let us do this? And then. Uh, and then either go through or not go through the Article 97. Correct. And if that's option two, two. that's option yeah. two. Option one, which includes the term right now in the conservation restriction, would still require approval of the easement holder or the, the holder mm -hmm. of the restriction before you can build the pipe anyways. Mm -hmm. So. It's a little different because amending a CR does take some work. You have to go to the state, but um, but you still need the holder's approval in either case. So I mean, it seems to me like uh, I don't know. My 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 opinion would be option two. Yeah, leave it silent. And leave yeah. it silent and get past this. And yeah. uh, you know, yeah. if at some point that happens to be where we want to put a public well because mm -hmm. uh, that's what this is about right yep. potential public well uh, we can deal with it then yeah my understanding is the well wouldn't be on this property yeah. it would just be the pipe mm -hmm. right no it, yeah. but it would be connecting to exactly, you know, exactly. The, a well, a well, public well. well. right yes. yeah. so does anybody have anything else that anybody want to chime in on anything shocking <laughs> just to be clear, I, I don't think this was a missed opportunity. I mean, the, the <coughs> property was purchased for conservation purposes, and the technicalities about the the way EOEA is looking at this um, couldn't be anticipated. Town Council has made it clear that they think that this is an no overly strict reading of it in any event. But there, there was not an opportunity, and there would have been no way for anybody with any foresight to basically say, <coughs> let's get some money from somewhere else to do this such that this small part of it might not be for that purpose. So mm -hmm. I, I don't think it's fair to say that this was a missed opportunity. I think it was done exactly as it should be. And the idea of the water um, route was actually came up after the whole purchase was done. Mm -hmm. um, and you're going to be in a similar position um, the theoretical approval of the development at the adjacent property where there'll be 32 acres that will be given to the town for conservation. 
that's also going to be given to the town for conservation. That's that's the whole point of the bylaws. The land has to be for conservation, and we're not at that point going to do anything to try to reserve rights. We'll do it exactly the same way. There will be a CR that will be silent on this issue. And again, it's very very theoretical um, that this would ever happen. Um, so it, it's not really kicking it down the road, kicking the can down the road. It's if and when the town needs that water, the town will figure out what the best route is, and it may yep. not even be through this right. mm -hmm. so Yeah, let's just hope so really we get to the point where that's the only water in town. Somebody's working with us to make sure that we can get it. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. So, so I will let CCF know, and we can move forward. Okay, but, um, <laughs> oh, sorry. But yeah. it's, uh, mm -hmm. Do we need everybody it? agree with that? Yes. 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 Do, do Option we have to two. vote on this? No? Okay. That was I heard everybody say yes. Yep. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, reports from the Housing Authority Subcommittee, appointments to the Housing Authority. So, uh, Jerry, do you want to give a quick update? <laughs> yeah, be happy to. Nathan, we had uh, uh, five people in town express an interest in being members of the Housing Authority with the understanding that these were, would be temporary appointments until the next town election, at which point permanent Housing Authority uh, members would or could be elected. Uh, there are three open positions on the Housing uh, Authority currently. There were five people that expressed an interest. The subcommittee. Uh, interviewed or spoke with by either personally or by phone with all five of them and um, uh, determined that um, a couple of things. One is that um, at the time that um, we originally uh, looked at the, the number, we, we thought that it would be important for someone uh, who had uh, at least some level of experience town committees to be represented on the Housing Authority. And we use that as part of the decision-making process to determine which three of the five we would recommend to the Board of Selectmen for appointment to the Housing Authority. Those three persons are David Friedman, Beverly Shorey, and George Payne. Um, the other two persons, Bob Sutnick and Ted Brewster, were uh, contacted subsequent to that recommendation uh, for the subcommittee and uh, um, we uh, told them that they were no longer in consideration and thanked them for uh, stepping forward. Uh, and we have uh, also confirmed with uh, David Friedman, Beverly Shorey, and George Payne that we would be recommending them to the Board of Selectmen at this meeting for approval. go through, uh, uh, I'm not sure, if, I'm sorry, I had to step out, um, just want to uh, recognize like, who was on the subcommittee. Yeah, we the subcommittee us. consisted of Nathan Brown, Maureen Geary, uh, who was a resident at uh, Penfield Farms, and Gary Kissinger. Okay, I just wanted to recognize that. Mm -hmm. Want a motion? Sure. I move that the Board of Selectmen vote. Um, to a point. Yep, sorry. Dan, sorry. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. If, if I could uh, suggest some additional language. You had the motion in front of you, but the uh, town council has prepared certificates of appointment for these three individuals. And if we could reference in the motion the position that they are replacing on the housing authority, that would uh, be uh, consistent with the language that the, the certification the town clerk has to make to the state. Okay. So I Is can. That for me to read or um, no but I, I, I can say that uh, in the motion uh, okay. David Friedman of 301 uh, Hutchins Road is uh, replacing Morgan Burse okay. Burse yeah. uh, Beverly Shorey replaces Stephen Perlman 
and George Payne who places Mark Levitan, all of whom resigned from the board. George, so George Payne, sorry, George Dave Payne Freeman is um, Morgan Burse. Replaces Morgan Burse. George Payne replaces Mark Levitan. And Mark Beverly Levitan. Shorey mm -hmm. replaces Stephen Perlman. Uh, so I move that the Board of Selectmen vote to appoint David Friedman at 301 Hutchinson Road to fill the uh, chair of Morgan Burse, George Payne at uh, 575 South Street to fill the chair of Mark Levitan, Beverly Shorey uh, 200 um, Toffet Road um, to replace um, Stephen Perlman uh, to fill thus filling the vacancies on the Carlisle Affordable Housing Authority through the May 7th, 2019 annual town election as recommended by the Affordable Housing Subcommittee. Second. Okay. So there's a first and a second. Any further discussion? Anybody want to say anything? David. <laughs> you, asked you, you asked us all to be here. So. Yeah. <laughs> no. No. Thank you. Just in case anybody had questions. Okay. <laughs> but for the record, all three of us are here. So that's Beverly Shorey, this is George Payne, and Mark Levitan. Thank you. And I do and appreciate you all doing that. I'd love to yes. see you um, all at our um, January 10th Affordable Housing Trust meeting as well. You're totally invited to that one as well. Well, we'll ask you a lot more questions. <laughs> and, and you'll need to designate a CPC rep. <laughs> Okay, any other discussion? Okay, all those in favor, brown eye. Oscar Lillo eye. Reed eye. Lewis eye. Okay, motion carries. Thank you all very Thank you. much. Thank you, yeah. Thank you. I wasn't joking about the CPC rep. <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> Caught up. So, uh, so, just for some housekeeping, can I make another uh, yes, motion? Please. I'd like to move the amend the minutes of November 13th to um, list Chairman Brown's proposal for addressing the Housing Authority and um, the Carlisle Affordable Housing Trust um, going um, forward as a document presented. Second. Okay, first and second. Any further discussion? Any questions? Okay, um, all those in favor, brown eye. I'll scroll a little. Sorry. That's all right. Read eye. Lewis eye. That's what it's better to have an order. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah. we started here, well, we started we, there. Why don't we just start from left just go down right. the line. Yeah, that's what, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Okay. And yeah. Carrie, you're the furthest right, so you, <laughs> you go last. <laughs> he doesn't know where he is. Yeah. <laughs> He's the furthest south. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay. We yeah. will move on to a recommendation for hiring a facilities manager. Uh, for the town office. No, uh, for, the, for the town. For the town. Well, then why do we have the town office school um, guy in there? Because it was recommended he be appointed as a non voting member of the facilities oh. committee. Oh, I'm sorry. Is that for the facilities That's committee? That's for the, yeah, Rob Furtado. Oh, I think yeah. two different things with the school. Okay, because I. That's not what it looked like from the motion I was reading. Sorry. Uh, is that right? There's two different things here? Where? There's two, different, two, two different items. Yeah. I'm going to hire five. Yeah. I have nothing in five. So we don't, yeah, we don't have anything. But actually, I, I can. Uh, but I had I all this stuff. Out, uh, uh, the individual's resume. You'll recall oh. that we advertised the position Seven. without success over the summer months. We advertised it oh. again. That's where I got uh, This fall. And uh, interviewed a number of candidates. I did, along with Kate, John Matibu, the building commissioner, and Bill Rizzo, citizen at large, and uh, expert on most things uh, that we do. We found two, two uh, candidates that we, we actually brought to the facilities committee to get their take uh, on things, and they uh, agreed and, and, and recommend to you that the town hire uh, Stephen Bastek of Tingsboro, Mass. Is he's, uh, he's not no, here. No, he's not here tonight. Not here tonight. 
I'm, I'm presenting his name to you tonight. I'm asking for your permission actually to negotiate terms of employment with him, and I'd, I'd bring him back uh, and bring back to you the uh, uh, proposed appointment for and that. And that I wanted to get your with him. Correct. Or, so it's not a done deal. It's not a done deal, but okay. I just wanted to present uh, okay. the candidate that the facilities committee recommends, and I think uh, Kate and I yeah. as well as. So what you're asking for is just to work out some more details and bring him back for an interview in the next yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, with your permission, I'll meet with him in the interim and, and uh, bring we, him back. But as you can see, he's, he's a, a master electrician and a, a facility specialist, uh, uh, or has been in the private sector, and uh, has a lot of hands-on experience, which I think our facilities person is going to need. Frankly, the long list of projects that we need to get, get moving on, and... Uh, I think uh, we all, I should say that the school facilities guy, Rob Furtado, was part of the interviews as well and, and uh, also agreed that uh, he thought, you know, Stephen would be someone he could work with would be a good fit uh, for the town. So this is more of an advisory to you that we're getting closer to uh, uh, making an offer to somebody and we bring him in to meet with the board just as soon as we can. Okay. I just want to add that the um, municipal facilities committee is moving cautiously um, it's going to be you know a, a short-term appointment mm -hmm. to start with with a 90-day probationary that's what we were recommending um, just because we've never done this before and we've never right. had one before and um, you know we had choices between people who were really strong and you know, um, more the managerial area area and, and but had absolutely no, you know, I'm not sure would know what a boiler looked like if they were presented with one. <laughs> and, but who more would project, have, project more, real project more manager kind of hands on kind, mm -hmm. and then the more hands on kind. And um, so we, we are making our opening gambit with help with the hands on guy. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but in a, and if we made a mistake, well, you know, yep. I'll okay. let you know. Great. Thank you. I, I, I think it, it's... So, is, is, Tim, is it our understanding that that this person would uh, basically go to full-time from part-time for the school at the same hourly rate? No, this no, is a, a different, different person. A different person. Than what is a different person? The school oh, hired yes. a full-time facilities manager. We have a 19 per hour week, 19 hours per week position that we're filling. If we needed it more, would he be willing to go full-time? Uh, he, he, we did ask him that, and he, he, he would be willing to consider that, but okay. it's funded at a part-time level now, and uh, okay. yeah, that would work as well. Any other questions, Carrie? If this is sort of reviewed as temporary, would, he, would, would it be wise for us to hire him on a consulting basis uh, uh, initially? Um, the Municipal Facilities Committee discussed that and decided um, that it would really be better to have an employee. Right. And the, the funds are in a, a and the wages and are in a, a, a budget uh, that I, I don't think you could pay a, a consultant uh, out of uh, a wage account. I think this was intended to be an employee. Yeah. If he were a consultant, he'd cost a whole lot yeah. more. <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> well, uh, you don't know what we've advertised as the going as an hourly rate. <laughs> it, it ain't much. <laughs> mm. Any other questions, Carrie? No, I was. I, it just occurred to me, and I sent an email to to Bill Rizzo about this. I haven't heard back, but I said, you know, there are people in town that do this sort of thing and that, that might be interested in doing it on a consulting basis for the time needed. Um, rather than hiring someone as an employee but um I, you know, I, I defer to your your judgment you've been working on this for a, a lot longer than well if we can I find been thinking about it so. if, if we can find those people we may be wanting to do that as well in future years yeah. Yeah. well and I, I have to say um actually the committee did write a letter to the mosquito saying just that you know um it, mother's hours so to speak and um we didn't get a single bite from that um, that's one thing and the other thing is that um, Bill was on the committee that did the interviewing and he met this guy and he was, was pretty excited or interested in him and very supportive of him his 
okay. candidacy. So, so. I would like to turn over the energy management system. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Individual. Yeah. Just yeah. anybody who's breathing. <laughs> well, no, I uh, think. Alan, any, any? I think uh, we should move ahead. Okay. Yeah. Luke? Yeah, I agree. And I, I like the wastewater uh, operator. Yes, uh, yes, I, absolutely. Yeah. He, he yeah. Would, yeah. And he offered to go back to school to get the next level, which he would need to. To do ours, to do ours, yeah, but it, to I help mean, out the schools, the yeah. So, so he's right. right. And so I mean, technically, be back up to the school, right? Because it's yeah. the school's facility. But yes, yeah. exactly. Right. It's good to have that. So. Okay. And do you have anything else? No. I, okay. Uh, I'm very. Anybody excited. here to talk about this? Looks like it's all agricultural commission out here. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So uh, uh, go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Very nice. Very nice to meet you. Thank you. Good. Okay, so this next thing uh, is, is an, it's one of the appointments, right? This is this uh, is our appointment. Oh, agriculture no, commission was first. Commission was first. Yeah. yeah. You guys so don't want to just why I got confused. By law. <laughs> come on up. You can uh, you can just sit here if you would prefer. Yeah. And you can all come on up and come on. Now. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm David E. Lee, Rutland Street. Yes, sir. Ball, Prospect Street. John Lee Lowell Street. Oh, you left Peter at home, huh? He's out of town. Watch oh. out. <laughs> He's my neighbor, so I should have known that, but You've I didn't. got the chair. I've got the chair. <laughs> oh, you've got the magical sinking chair. I've got the booster seat. I'll not fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> not embarrass everybody. <laughs> so we sent to the selectmen um, draft right to farm bylaw. Um, hopefully you've all had a chance to, to read it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the bylaw um, we adopted from the Massachusetts Association of Agricultural Commissions. Um, they have a um, bylaw. Um, there are several towns in Massachusetts that have established um, or reaffirmed uh, the right to farm. Uh, locally, Chelmsford, Littleton, Westford, Lincoln, and Westman um, all have right to farm bylaws. Oh, they do. Okay. Um, so this is uh, is fairly typical. Um, we took the model right to farm bylaw and made a couple of edits to it. Um, one was more grammatical in, in nature. Um, some of the words were reiterated several times, and so we cleaned that up a little bit. Um, the the other addition we made to the to the template bylaw um, was in there was a section of four in the model about disclosure notification. Um, in the model, there are uh, disclosures um, that the model seeks to um, adopt. Um, typically, um, notifications happening at uh, real estate transactions. Mm. Um, we thought that some of those notices were too onerous uh, and unnecessary uh, in a lot of cases, so we adopted it out of our draft. Um, we would like to. Um, we would like the board of selectmen to adopt. Um, the bylaw. Um, it reaffirms what's already written in the Massachusetts General Law, uh, and we quote chapter and verse in the first paragraph. Um, and so we are here to present that to you. So is this in a town vote? Yes, it would be. It's a bylaw. Yeah, it would yeah. be a town meeting vote. We don't adopt it, right? No. Right. Yeah, we'll go to town meeting. We'll go to town meeting. We're looking for our support. We're looking for our support. And so if we did, then. Presumably, you know, it would be in the warrant, and one of you would get up and, and speak to it. Um, I just had one quick question as I read through this, and, and it may just be um, the scarring of having been uh, on the stage at the time. But does this undo the work we did for the noise bylaw for the chickens? Yeah, I was going to ask mm. on that idea. Because it says, <coughs> no I knew somebody come up with a thorny question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it's, it's, it will come it up at town meeting. Like no, I know. It, it, it looks like it. So it, it might. This is specifically about commercial farming. Yep. But if I have a commercial farm next to somebody's house and my roosters don't stop crowing, does the noise bylaw allow somebody to take action to? If. I read it the way it's been presented. There's a, <clears throat> there's a, a process, a reconciliation process, right. that the complaint comes to the Board of Selectmen first and then goes to the Agricultural Commission. 
neither of whom really want to deal with the issue, but will be forced to. Uh, I, my understanding is, and I'm not a lawyer, and I'm not a process person, is it would not override the but noise bylaw. It's actually by the same process that the noise bylaw yes. has. Yes, exactly. Um, right. So, I mean, I think this is great. I just want to make sure we're not undoing all that work that went into. I think they're sistered. Yeah, and so I think. Can I town council? Ask town council to review. Ask town council to see how we can. Yeah, they're not in conflict with each other. Worlds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, ask town make sure they're not in conflict with each other. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the noise bylaw wasn't, you can't. The noise bylaw was, if somebody complains, this is your process and your right. remedy. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think I just want to make sure that there's still something there. Yeah. And this is commercial, so obviously the noise bylaw, what does commercial mean? Uh, well, that's, that's really yeah. nice. So commercial Sorry. is for production and revenue associated with that production. Right, and so... So therefore, because this we went through this with a noise bylaw, it was a certain revenue. I think it was like fifteen hundred dollars a year or something, or I, I, I may be I, wrong. It wasn't a lot. But none of the the language I've seen stipulates a, a number. Okay. Well, but for this town, we might need to. Well, no, there there uh, was there was a stipulate. There, there yeah. was something when we went through. There was a there was a definition of commercial. Yeah. And there and there is a number for tax purposes. Right. Whether right. you are so commercial can, or not, whether you can, whether it's for farming. You know, yeah. Yeah. Well, if you're if you're looking for a preferential tax treatment, right. yes, absolutely. Yeah. It's I think it's it's a minimal number, but yeah, yeah also, but it's attached to yeah. a certain. You have to have a certain amount of land in production, right. also. So there's. Yes, you you're to, right. You have yeah, to have was, two factors. Was, you yeah, had, had to income, and, and about, uh, it was it was a certain amount, and I think, but I think like fifteen hundred. Sales I, think, or something. I thought it was in 1,500 sales in two acres. It's actually yeah, more, so than, it's more than two acres. The state is 505 well, acres. acres. Yeah, maybe it was more acres yeah. than that. Um, you know, so, I mean, you know, yeah, well, so I'll I'm, just. I'm, yeah, and I'm concerned about odor as well. Um, you know, one pig can smell as bad as it does. You know, if you have a commercial place next to you that's got a whole bunch of them um, it could be pretty irritating to some of the yeah. mm. what is what is the recourse yep. making sure there's a recourse not you know because yeah yep and and the resolution yeah. of disputes in section 5 right, I mean, right. yeah that. That. right. Yep. Can, uh, the other one, that, that, and, I don't, and I only say this because I have no idea what it means when it talks about access to water services. They can have access to their own well. Yeah, can have access to their well, own that's, well. That's yep. and, and potentially if, presumably if someone takes over the cranberry bog and decides to, to continue to farm it. Mm -hmm. It would need access to water sources. Okay. Well. It, okay. Does, it doesn't allow you to yeah. take yeah. water from somebody else's property. Can we ask Tom that one yeah. too? Yeah. Section so, so. 4. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have a question on the remediation uh, process. There are those in town who would think that we no longer have any Carlisle honey because the bees have all been killed by pesticides that are distributed on farmers' cornfields. How, do you, how would we address that kind of remediation issue? Okay, that's, I want to take issue with that one. <laughs> um, I think that it, we're one to do even the most modest amount of research. One would probably find that, in fact, the largest amount of toxic pesticides that are killing bees are used by homeowners who spray everything in their yards and then use half the container and throw the container in, in the wash or dump it down the drain. I mean, this, that is patently, an, and I don't mean to sound pissy, but it is a patently unfair <laughs> accusation that's broadly leveled at production agriculture. And yes, it's clearly a problem, but I, don't, I just think it's unfair to say that farmers are killing, killing the bees. But so I think having a really good response to that at town meeting mm -hmm. would be important. Yep. Yep. Some, somebody will raise it. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. I can tell you from my own experience, it was the bear who got my bees this summer. <laughs> <laughs> so it 
It wasn't the farmers. It wasn't Duffy spraying stuff on his fields. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I, I sprayed for black rot this year. Well, we're only we're we're only considering deer hunting, okay? So. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, about getting dogs. <laughs> okay, so, um, yeah, so I guess, you know, I, I think this is great. You know, I think we just, it's going to be making sure that you have the answers for town meeting and that's about odor, um, about noise, bee type things, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and about noise. And so I think that, you know, we can ask Tom to, to kind of look at how this overlaps with the noise bylaw yeah. and how just making sure that we're not stuck in a situation where uh, under the resolution of disputes where there's where we were before where there, there really was you know there was a resolution thing but there was no there was no key to it you you know mm -hmm. you could talk but you could talk and you could talk and you could talk and, you, and there really wasn't anything that you could do about it so just making sure that there is something there if there's something egregious that's going on. No, I think those are all good points. I think that that's mm -hmm. why we're here at this meeting now, to kind of put this in front of you to make sure that all of our T's are crossed and our I's are dotted. Yeah. Also understand that the, this is a reaffirmation of existing law. Right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. we're not making anything up. This is already out there and in the Massachusetts. Yeah, yeah we just yeah. want to make sure that yeah. it passes. Uh, understood. Yeah. Right. And, and I do think it's important to really make sure that people understand what the commercial Part yeah, yeah. Yes. So um, outlining what does commercial I mean? mean? If yes. I have a few extra tomatoes and I sell them at, at you know, you know, on a table, is that commercial or is yeah. it? You know, what what are we talking? I think yeah, it is fifteen hundred dollars in five acres. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the thing. And if council goes through that, they'll yeah. pull out those definitions yeah. and say we need to define this. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And they'll make sure it's consistent with yeah. the state. They'll make sure it's consistent with bylaws. They'll probably put back all that wordiness that we took out. <laughs> so I, I would I would say that you know uh, you you know I'm not speaking to the board but I'm going to propose that they work with Tim and Town Council to work through yeah. these issues and mm -hmm. then come back. Yeah. 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 I get comments from Council. I'll that would be a great. Way yeah. Yeah. When, I, when I was farming in Lincoln, there was they had a definition for a variety of agricultural pursuits, and one of them was what, what was a piggery, and a piggery mm -hmm. at that time was ten pigs. Mm -hmm. um, and <clears throat> we may at some time want to think about whether we want to define certain terms. Yep. Uh -huh. um, and pigs are certainly, I think, in most people's minds, one that, I mean, it's the first thing, <clears throat> excuse me, it's the first thing that comes up is, you know, I don't want to live next to a piggery. Right. Um, there's, I mean, Miss Peabody had probably a hundred pigs on her farm in, in uh, uh, not them, in Dover, and nobody ever complained about them, and you'd never know they were there because they were on you know hundred acres of pasture. Yeah, well, that's, yeah. that's yeah. it. All depends. How, all depends right. how you so, house them. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yes. So that might be something you consider defining. Yeah. yeah. So if you want to have a wallow, that's right. Okay. Good. Good. Anything Good. else? Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very yeah. much. Thanks Good for job. all your work. Yeah. And are you, because some of you were at 108, are you going to be providing back your thoughts about the Stern Street property? The which? The Stern, Stern. The Stern Street property that we did the site visit for? Oh, I was there. Yes. Yeah. So we're just interested in hearing your thoughts about it. You know, the town has a right of first refusal. Mm -hmm. um, so. You know, not now because you have, may may not have talked about I would it. I'd be happy to hide under the table so you wouldn't know who was speaking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, so it's not on our agenda, so we can't talk about it now. Yeah. Okay. But we are hoping that those committees that were there will give us mm -hmm. their feedback on: is it worth doing something? What might we do with it? And could, and I think yeah, we'll be talking about it in our so next. So we'll our agenda yeah. for the, the next. Meeting. Yeah, and when yeah. is your next meeting? Next week. The third Thursday. So it's uh, yeah, okay. Next Thursday. And that's that's before our we would be considering yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. We had 120 Thursday. days. We still have a while, right? Yeah. 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 I'll remind. Uh, if you could remind the everybody who's there, trails. Yeah. 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 Who else? Came trails. Cons. Uh, yep. uh, uh, who else came from? Conscom was. Uh, not so Conscom, but the Conservation Foundation. Yeah. Did anybody from CCF go? No. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
No. Was Wayne oh, there? Wayne, Wayne. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, Wayne was there. there. Uh, so we had we had everybody, really. Yeah, we did. We had quite a turnout. Yeah. Impressive. So yeah. just. Everybody wanted to see the house. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's, it's our opportunity, not, not saying, hey, we should do it or we shouldn't do it. Yeah. Just, you know, you went there, just let us know what you thought. And if, you, if we were to do it, why would we do it? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I didn't mean to get on the sandbox. No, it's fine. It's right. just, I mean, it, it's a really good point of something we're going to need to address yeah. at town meeting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, appointments. Not very. We're almost back on time. That's, that's why I got confused. The motion makes a sign we're, we're appointing him as school facilities manager, but really to appoint him to an unvoting seat on the yeah. facilities that's, committee. That's why I got, you know, I read this and I was thinking, I'm thinking, really? Are we supposed yeah. to be oh, okay. doing this? So, yes. Uh, so, so we want to change this yes, motion. The, the motion is totally wrong. Yeah. So, can I, can I move that the Board of Selectmen vote to appoint Robert J. Fortado uh, as a. Um, Ex, uh, ex officio member of the um, Municipal Facilities Company Committee, non voting ex officio member. Uh, I just want to uh, make a friendly amendment that it's of Beverly Mass. Of Beverly Mass, sorry. Uh, is I there will a second. second? Okay, second. First and second. Any further discussion? Okay, um, all those in favor, brown eye. Oscalillo eye. Lewis eye. Reed eye. Yes, sir. Now we're going from left to right. Oh, okay. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the chair. I'm, I'm sorry. Go I just can't go yeah, inward. No. <laughs> okay. That's our only appointment cemetery deeds. Here it doesn't look like there are any. There are a whole bunch of them. Yeah. All oh, on my street. My All yeah. the same. And they weren't family. on the doctor's sign. Yes. Are they planning on dying a lot? I don't know what's going on. Uh... Do you have them? I don't have them. I yeah, I don't have any of them either. So I can't. Uh, they're, not in, they're not in the book. So they're all they're all up to you. Oh. Uh, they're not in, in the book at all. No. So should I pull up my? Yeah, no. And they were and they weren't on the DocuSign document either. Mm -hmm. uh, section yeah, eight. They were in the is the executive That's session. I yeah, I got the DocuSign. Uh, could you read them to us then? How about if you uh, suggest a motion and we can say yeah. so move? Does that work? Okay, I can I can do that. It's, uh, on, uh, we want to hold these back. The board might want to move to vote to transfer land in the public burial ground which doubles our summer of 125 Keith Hill Road at Green Keith Cemetery Hill Lot D-257, grade, grade 1. And move the board vote to transfer land in the public burial ground from Richard Cobb Stevens, Cemetery Deed number 121A, grade 1, back to the town of Cobb. Planning on not dying. I Living forever. Good for, Good for him. Good for him. The board vote to transfer land in the public burial ground to Patricia and John Lasky of 203 East Riding Drive at Green Cemetery, Lot D-126, graves 1, 2, 3, and 4. Move that the board vote to transfer land in the public burial ground. Oh, I think that's on there twice. Move that the board vote to transfer land to the public burial ground. That's something like three times. Yeah, it's three different plots. You got a little uh, stutter. Oh, I'm sorry. It's, I'm, I'm missing the, the, the important thing. Yeah. The board vote to transfer land to the public burial ground to Patricia and John Lasky, 203 East Riding Drive, at Green Cemetery Lot D-127, gra graves 1, 2, 3, and 4. And also to move that the board transfer land to the public burial ground to Patricia and John Lasky of 203 East Riding Drive at Green Cemetery Lot D-128, graves 1, 2, 3, and 4. That's a party. Different. Wow, that's 12. So There's moved. only two of them. Is that two acres? It's going to take only. advantage of the farming bylaw. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, uh, somebody say so moved. I just did. Okay, so move. is there second. a second? Second. Is a second. So we have a first and a second. Any further discussion? Yeah, just a quick question. When somebody transfers it back to the town, we have to pay them 
We pay them exactly what, they, what paid they, they paid for it. Yeah. 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 All right. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Uh, Brown aye. eye. Lewis eye. Oscar Lula eye. Green eye. Kissing eye. Okay. Yeah, they can see the proposed upcoming meeting schedule. However, what we haven't slotted in here yet is uh, the interviews for the uh, finalists for fire chief. The uh, search committee uh, has to meet one more time and vote uh, uh, an executive session by roll call vote to recommend finalists uh, to the selectmen. That hasn't happened yet, so we don't uh, we don't yet have a schedule for uh, those interviews. But presumably, we could do it in enough time that it occur at the next meeting on the 22nd. I, mean, I, think, that's I think that's unlikely. But we'll, no, well, we'll the, know. The, the, yeah. uh, it may be the next one. The, uh, um, you, you do want to do it at the board meeting, though. Is that, that's the impression I got. Yes. But, so it will be the... The 12th would be fine. Yeah, because I, I think, I think so we want to not do it off cycle because, you know, everybody so closely tracks what our schedule is. Yeah. Um, I think I think we want it to, you know, be something that, you know, we want people to know to come. Okay. Well, right. I, I will not be present on February 12th. I'm going to be in New Zealand, so I will also, I mean, unless I have Wi-Fi, and mm-hmm. probably, yeah, uh, uh, probably the wrong time of day as well. 7 o'clock in the morning? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. So. <laughs> All right, we'll find a time, but um, and, okay. and maybe we will do it off cycle. But um, seven o'clock in the morning, the day before, the January twenty second <laughs> is the week after next, right? Uh, so I guess, I guess it's potentially possible. Okay. I'm I'm not here on the twenty second. You're not here on the twenty second. Yeah. I would have been. But All right. I have to go um, to San Francisco. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, so I mean, if one other person can't come, I mean, I think this is the Deer Committee. Um, is that the 22nd? Uh, uh, Sorry, I just booked it today. Our departmental budgets. Uh, oh, yeah, oh, household recycling. Oh, Ooh, I want to be here for that one. Yeah. Um, Sorry. Uh, My last trip. Well, though. what's the week after the 22nd? The, um, 9th. Did we have a yeah, instead of the 22nd? It works for me. Can you make the 29th? <laughs> <laughs> Hang on. Uh, Can I make the 29th? Oh, I had, oh yeah. So we're not doing the 15th, right? No. We're not doing the 15th. That's right. I picked yeah, that one off. off. Of my, <laughs> my we're calendar. Not doing the, yeah, that, that was an so add on, right? Yes. Yeah. Could, Okay, and so then... If we did the 29th, that I think would give us enough time on the fire department thing. Yeah. And yes. if Luke can be here. Yeah, I'm here on the 29th, yep. All right, yep. And I'm that. here on the 29th. And you're here, on, and Alan, you're here? Yes. And Carrie, will you be on Skype? I will be. Okay, so, okay, so why don't we move our next meeting to January 29th? Okay, move the 22nd to the 29th. Yep. Okay. Seven. I think the 12th is then two weeks out, so you're kind of right. still on a two week schedule. Yeah. 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 Okay. 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 All right. And then, so the 22nd, no BOS. If I don't delete it, I will show up. Bear with us, everybody watching, while we make sure we don't <laughs> miss this. We don't meeting. mess this no. up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> everybody on the well, it's no, it's the. No. I'm old fashioned. The calendar doesn't happen. Yeah. Yeah, look so at that. The calendar thing. Wow. gets done. <laughs> so much faster. <laughs> it really is. It really is. Let's see. Now my wife already knows. Bang! She got a notification. Huh. She doesn't know about my trip, though, yet. She does now. She does now. <laughs> she's watching. No, she's TV. not watching. Who the hell watches this? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so we are not going to be meeting, just so everybody knows, we are not going to be meeting on the 22nd of January. Um, we are going to be meeting on... 29th. Right. I'll delete that later. Okay. Okay. Um, anything else? Yeah, let's just pass these over here. I'll do them later. Oh. 15th is off the 
Wilson, right? Yes. Right. Yep. Okay, so uh, let's uh, jump to liaison reports. I think most of mine are going to oh. be in the executive session. I didn't do that one right. Oh my God, look, I'm going to San Francisco every three days for the next <laughs> year, apparently. Oh God. You just All got right. 6, so while he's while he's trying to figure that out, let's move on to minutes. Um, we have minutes for December 11th, and an amendment to the minutes of April 10th. April 10th. Yes. Okay. Uh, so I will I will ex <laughs> I will explain this. Um, uh, so we'll, we'll do the April 10th first because it's earlier in the calendar. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, uh, Carrie uh, noticed that um, on the uh, April 10th meeting uh, minutes, it had been stated that the Center Park um, issue uh, needed, you know, you may re recall that we were saying that we need to have something in place. Um, we had said by December 31st, 2018, uh, that so by, you know, if there wasn't anything in place by December 31st, we were going to go ahead and um, ask DPW to manage the park. Yes. Um, and uh, uh, Carrie noticed that in the minutes it um, accidentally said July uh, 2019. Mm -hmm. um, Jen reviewed the video. And in fact, we had said December 31st. Yeah. So that was confirmed. So this isn't changing what was said. It's just making the minutes reflect. Do you want to add anything to that, Carrie? Put these in over there. <laughs> this is no. just on the minutes. We will. We can bring up the other topic. Um, yeah. No, I have nothing to add. OK. Um, I move we amend the minutes. Um, of April 10th with regards to the motion voted for the Senate Park Management Options. Second. I, I guess I just would add as a point of information that the founder of Center Park has read those same minutes on the town website that said uh, July 2019. And uh, so, that, okay, yes, but okay. Yeah, well, we can talk about you know if this makes us want to change our strategy at all, but at least let's just correct the minutes. Yeah, because um, you know I'd, I'd like to treat them as two different things, if that's okay with you, Carrie. Yes, it is. Yeah. Okay. I definitely recall that that was the intent. Yeah. Okay, sure. and so so we would move the amendments uh, of the minutes regarding the motion, um, uh, as presented tonight. Right. Is there a second? Second. Uh, so Kate, Kate made the motion. Second. Whatever your name is. Second. Is there <laughs> any further discussion? Okay. Seeing none. All those in favor. Aye. Aye. No, it has to be Brown eye. No. I'll go See, that's away. why I always go first. Yeah. Lewis eye. Reed eye. Kissing her eye. Okay. okay. It's unanimous. Okay. And December 11th minutes. Um. I just had one change that was of any importance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, under library trustees, one, two, three, four, five, sixth paragraph, last sentence should read, the budget will continue to increase and will cost over $25,000 after five years as a result of adding the requested 6 k it said that it would just inc continue to increase every five years. Well, that's not at all what was said. Okay. So that does have to be clarified. So. Okay. Any other edits? Then there's there's a typo. There's mm -hmm. the top of one page. And should, instead of the designation, it should be the designated finance committee liaisons. Okay. That's all. And Jen hasn't seen these. She hasn't. Okay. Normally, I get these to her beforehand, yeah. and we get in the. Yeah. I, I in gave the her a whole bunch of corrections this uh, morning, but they're they, they're showed up in here already. Okay. Oh, they're in this one. In this packet. The one that's in the packet. I didn't yeah, read see, this one. And I didn't read that one in the packet. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Either. Were they were they typo or were they sub 
substantive. Well, they were they were substantive in that there's a new selectman called uh, Alan Brown. Okay, mm. that's awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. That means one of us can go. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. It, it also had you voting on something after you left the meeting, but, that, but that's been corrected well, also. Okay. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Seconded by Alan Brown. Yeah. And I missed, totally missed that. Okay. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> so it's, it was things like that. Yes. 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 Okay. It was all, it was all it, I mean, not, nothing yeah. substantive in terms of policy or anything. Okay. Yeah. So is there a motion to approve the minutes of Dece Tuesday, December 11th, 2018 as amended? I move we approve the minutes of December 11th, 2018 as amended. Second. Okay, first and second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Lewis, aye. Oscar Lillowak. <laughs> Brown, aye. Reed, aye. Kissinger, aye. We I got it. Yeah. I feel like I should be well, a conductor. It took three hours. I black. <laughs> I'm just going to give her these two pages. Okay. And uh, so liaison reports. Uh, I've been... I haven't been attending, but have been monitoring a huge amount of activity in the Energy Task Force that's been going on over the last couple of weeks uh, with regards to uh, pay to throw and uh, so actually accumulating a great deal of data uh, from around the state on what the pros and cons of that are and what it might cost and what the benefits might be. So they will be, they'll be giving us a formal report, but they're making tremendous progress. Yeah. Great. I don't think I've gone. Uh, I don't Tim and I had a an IT Tim's Tim's group of IT. We had that meeting. Was that last week or the week before, Tim? It was the week before. Yeah. Yeah, and so it was just kind of a take a look at you know where are we? Um, we went through uh, the lists of projects that um, we had told town meeting and. Um, FinCom and the Board of Selectmen that we would be working on. Um, we worked through, I mean, it's, it's, we did a lot of them. Um, and so that, that kind of made us all feel pretty good that we had gotten so much of it done. There are still more things we need to do. I think we need to focus a little bit more on some of, some of the audit findings from the last time mm -hmm. around. Um, and there's, there's more we can do to try to leverage some of the things that we have implemented. Um, but uh, we're working on kind of like what the ask is going to be for this year. Is that any, yeah. want to add anything? No, well, that's uh, uh, David Day was there as well. Yes. We looked at the inventory of the, of the, the replacement schedule going forward. What we yeah. need to do because uh, window, the window seven won't be supported in about a year's time. So. <laughs> We've got a lot of machines that are. Yeah, so we're looking to. Tim is, Tim is going through the list, right? And yeah. I think we're, and and talking to people, and we're, so we're we're looking to kind of, get into that mode now where we're operationalizing the replacement of twenty five percent of the computers yeah. at town hall every year, yeah. Makes sense. which isn't a huge number of computers, no. but yeah. um, it doesn't make yeah. sense to purchase upgrades for an operating system, if you're going to be replacing the right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're so cheap though. So how many people are in your IT? So we're interested in other people, but um, who is officially on it? Five and six now, right? Dave. Uh, Dave. Dave McKay. McKay. Uh, Jason Chantonet. Is Bill Rizzo still on it? <laughs> I, I don't know. It makes sense. I think he yeah. doesn't want to be, <laughs> but he Shaw's is. On it. Uh, no. Ted Shaw, myself. I invited uh, Bob Supnick. Uh, oh, did you? Yes, he, he hasn't mm -hmm. attended yet, but he's interested in being. Yeah, he is. Okay. So there's five or six people that are. Part of it, and the thing about you know we, we really could use more people. Hello, we really could use more yeah. people um, interested in the technology. Um, you know what what we really need are people who will come in and, and actually help us implement, mm -hmm. and you know show people how to do it. And um, you know we have we have the plans. We're definitely interested in people you know who want to help with the planning and everything. But we really also that we don't have a technology person. Mm -hmm. And so right. we need somebody who's actually going to be able to have some time to sit down and help us implement things. Yeah. And, the, and the school IT uh, director, Scott Hefner, is part of the group, too. Yeah, that's okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, hang on, I've got to turn it. You must have um, 400 former tech employees who are lighting nope, the kids mm -hmm. are still there. <laughs> uh, that's okay. <laughs> We're almost uh, done. Uh, any other liaison reports? Uh, I just been the municipal facilities has been meeting weekly. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so hammering away at everything. Mm. It's been on the wrist. But okay. there's been no fault of their own. I mean, it really isn't. Every time we look at a site, we find more problems. And yeah, stop looking. I know, yeah. I know, but you know. Use your eyes. Yeah. So, well, I'll let you know. All right. Carrie, did you have anything? Yeah, you can turn them back. The down. Deer Committee. There's a copy of the Deer Committee report in your packet. Yeah. The full yeah. report. And in terms of uh, the fact that only three people voted uh, at the Deer Committee to recommend that a question go to town meeting, they had a quorum. The two people that abstained were hunters and uh, felt, I think, I wasn't there, but I think they felt they should abstain because they were. They were part part of the hunt and should uh, abstain. So okay. um, it wasn't that they did it because they were that's against. That's why it. The, the vote was as it was. Carrie, that report didn't include a lot of things that were t talked about this evening in the public session, uh, huh. and so I'm wondering if it's co if it's complete. What do you, did you th hear the public session that you didn't yeah. think it was? Yeah, things on. on oh, no, it did have something about cameras. It had it had the tree stand orientation, trail usage, um, and it did have cameras. I did see it in there. Trail, trail cameras, cameras number, number nine. nine. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I wanted to know. But the, and there, but there was no recommendation to the board of selectmen in there anywhere. It's true. Um, you just say there's no policy. <laughs> well, also nothing about whether it goes to town meeting or not. Uh, In the minutes uh, for the meeting on the third, uh, they've included the fact that they did vote to recommend to the selectmen that they go to town meeting and how that vote went. Okay, because that's not in this report. That's that's not in this report. Have been yeah. yet, All right. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so I think you know there may be things that we want to. Um, so it seems like uh, for our next meeting, Carrie, we should have this report, the minutes, and what the article would say. Right. The town warrant article. The town warrant article. Is it more like a resolution than a? Because I don't think you can. And mandate it, right? Isn't it just kind of the sense of town meeting that either the town supports or doesn't support the continuation of the? I wish I'd asked the question when Wayne was here. Whether you can do a binding question or not, it might just be it might just be advisory. But I mean, it, you know, yeah, it treated as binding, whatever mm -hmm. the town sure. said. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I, I guess we might just want to word it as, you know, the board of, you know, the board of selectmen, you know, while authorized to provide this, you know, to to allow this, is looking for direction from town meeting as to whether or not they want to continue to allow the board of selectmen to authorize hunting on town meeting, therefore keeping it within the board of selectmen, but getting the town to either support or not support the board of selectmen deciding to do it. Yeah, what does the bylaw say? Uh, the bylaw basically gives the Board of Selectmen permission, right? So right. it would either remain the same or we would change that bylaw, right? So Because it's already in there, so you'd need a right. two-thirds vote to change it to not allow. So I guess that's, yeah, council would reword that, right? Well, if you want to do that, you might want to keep the permission within the board but the board goes on what the sense yeah. of the town is that's what i that's what oh, i was saying oh so you don't want to change the i got you. but well, i was just i was just oh. saying we okay. can do it now uh we did it this year town is it okay if mm. we you know yeah. you know okay. we're not going to ask that's you every okay. time we just want to uh, you know get confirmation that it's okay that the board of selectmen is able to approve hunting on town owned lands mm. and if the town says okay well then it's still then it would still re, re, fall on us to make sure that if cameras yeah. were allowed, cameras, you know, and not put that all before town meeting. Right. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Right. And yeah. we'll discuss this all again. Yeah. 
yeah. uh, later because this is just a liaison report. Right. Yeah. We will discuss this in the next meeting if yeah. somebody remembers. Yeah, we don't want them voting on the bylaw. No. Right. All right. Okay. So I think that's it. And so I think that we are going to have somebody read this motion to move into executive session. Find it again. Okay. Here, Here it is. I got it. Yep. I move that the board uh, enter into executive session pursuant to Mass General Laws Chapter 30A, Section 21A, Paragraphs 2 and 3 to discuss strategy with respect to the police union contract, the teachers union contract, and the police chief's employment agreement as an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the town's bargaining position, and that afterwards the board will not return to open session. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Lewis, aye. Oscar Lillo, aye. Brown, aye. Reed, aye. Kissing her, aye. Got it twice in a row. Thank you very much. <laughs> that uh, concludes our public portion. Oh, <laughs> <Beautiful>. <laughs> lights out. <laughs> Look at us working as a team.